Hi, this is Shadi and today I have something to discuss with you. So I've been in Japan for a little over a month now and I've trained judo for years in France and it is somewhat different here. So I've trained so far in the city of Osaka, Tokyo and Kobe and I've noticed a small pattern uh, throughout those uh, training uh, sessions. So when it comes to Newaza, this is something that I've talked about relentlessly on my channel, uh, showing historical footage, uh, trying to compare it with what's happening today with quote, new inventions of the ground game that's happening in the West. And a lot of the stuff is just, as a lot of you comment, nothing new under the sun. So what's happening here in Japan, Neiwaza wise or ground grappling wise and the truth is from what I've seen so far maybe maybe I'll do a video I don't know uh, a little bit later uh, a while later and say something else if I discover something else but for now the truth isn't as interesting as you might think it is uh, Neiwaza wise um, here's what's actually happening there is little to no Neiwaza if you want to go and train judo. I'm talking about the adults. I'll get to the kids and the cadets um, later on. But in terms of the adults, there's just no Neiwaza happening. You, you might say, okay, well, if you're doing all these stand-up rounds, then I'm sure you're getting to practice your transitions because transitions, they're also a world of their own. You can see a lot of people invest in them like Neil Adams and so many others. And I hate to break it to you, but there's also no transition training. Um, yes, there are some drills that we do here and there, but um, in terms of when we spar and when we do randori, there's not uh, much. And the reason is the following. You see, when you fill up the mats, all these people are fighting. Uh, even you can go watch like the Japanese national team. You can see it's a full house, like ippai, like just full house. And let's say something happened and then you and your partner are now on the ground you know you want to pass guard you want to maintain a pin you want to I don't know go for a lock go for a strangle um, a lot of the times it's going to be hazardous for you and your partner and the others you know you might trip someone might trip on you some might someone might fall on you someone can get injured uh, because there is an obstacle a huge obstacle in the way on the ground so a lot of the times you know when people are you know, starting to engage in Neiwaza and, you know, someone has a good position and they want to, you know, proceed to take advantage of it. Um, the sensei is going to be like, you know, no Neiwaza, you know, it's, it's dangerous for the others, you know, get back up. And that's something that's, uh, to me is, it's a bit, um, I don't know what, like how to put my finger on it, but, um, it's not something I like in France. Trans, even if we didn't do rounds on the ground, like for example, a lot of the times we start training and the first two or three rounds, they're always Neiwaza. And if not, sometimes the sensei just doesn't have that, you know, flavor for Neiwaza, doesn't like it that much. He's going to be like, just start standing. But there's always room for transitions. We always transition. We always go for the pin. We always go for the arm lock. And, you know, um, from all the instructionals I've seen, like Jujigitame and, you know, Sankaku, etc., I managed to apply a lot of them in training because the allowance of that transition. But here, barely any, you know, Neiwaza training. If you want to do a round, you can actually pick someone if, you know, both of you obviously consent to it and go to the side of the mat outside of the red or orange uh, square and you can do your rolling there. But this is where another issue comes up is that a lot of Japanese judokas just simply do not like Neiwaza. They're going to tell you, um, sure, uh, maybe you can drill your Uchikomi. I don't know Neiwaza. And it's not that they're lying. I do believe them, but um, it's not something that they practice or they haven't practiced it in years. And I'll get to that because of the kids later on. Um, or you can do your uh, your Uchikomi on me. You can drill if you want. Uh, or sometimes they will do a round with you and Maybe that's it. Just one round that you can get in the entire couple of hours. Um, this is something I've noticed in these several places that I've trained in. Um, so what's happening? Okay. It's very simple. People just don't, a lot of people just don't like Neiwaza. They, it's a lot of fun to do Uchikomi, Nagekomi. 
Um, they've did they've done a lot of newaza as kids because obviously as a kid, um, the structure of the class is different. The structure of the class is what we do in the West today. It's you know a lot of techniques. Let me show you how to do this. You do this. You grip, or you know you do this feint and then he reacts this way. I'll do this. You see it in BJJ. You see it in judo. You see it in everywhere in the West. Um, but in Japan, after quite some time, it becomes very classic that you come, you drill, you warm up, uh, a lot of, you know, entry of your favorite techniques and then just rounds and rounds. Because as an adult, you know, I'm not gonna tell, teach you how to do a technique or something. Um, you just, you know, because for example, let's say I'm a Sarah and I get specialist for the sake of argument. I come and I show you this, you know, um, combo and uh, how to do this little feint and then how they react and from there I do uh, a ponseranage. But a lot of people maybe they don't do it. They do tomoenage, they do ochigari, they do uchimata and you know it's not, it's not gonna help them. Of, of course obviously they're on something new but is it gonna help their game? Probably not. So you just do drill your own thing and then from there you you know, do rounds and rounds and rounds. But in terms of the teachers, there's a lot of teachers. They're always there. They're always walking around. They're kind of like lurking in a sense. And they will come and teach you something if they notice something in your game. Sometimes you can approach them and tell them, hey, I want to make this technique happen in this position or that position, left versus right, right versus right. And, you know, I'm having trouble with the gripping. And they teach you these little tricks that are very valuable, of course. They're very valuable and they add to your game because at this point, it's not about the big technique. It's about these little um, small increments that you add to your game, like gripping feints and tactics that are invisible to someone that's outside of the randori. And this is when, you know, they become specialists in gripping kumite and, of course, you know, the finish of the technique. So, um if you want to do newaza, I'm, I'm talking here in Japan, in the West, judo, especially France, newaza still has, still being highly regarded as a part of judo, and I'm very fortunate to have started judo there. So, is, is, is there schools here that probably, you know, prioritize both? Probably yes, and but I'm talking about like the big ones, like, you know, the, the big schools in Kobe, in Osaka, Kodokan, etc., it's a lot of newaza, and if Judo Highlights is listening to this, I really hope he can give his two cents on this, because he's been here for years now, and um, he even commented recently on my uh, post, he says, I've cross-trained BJJ since there's very little newaza in Japan, and uh, I'm, I think I'm not the only one who made that uh, observation. So, what's happening here? Um, again, like I said, very little people like Newaza and all they want to do is stand up. So is this taking the art of judo to a new direction? You know, where, you know, become more of stand up focused, very little. And if you want to do something else, you can go either join a Kosen team in a university or you simply do BJJ with it. Um, I'm not sure, but, um, you know, when I talk about Oda, when I talk about, you know, Sankaku Jime, when I talk about these things, People say jujitsu, and when I mention these, you know, Kanemitsu and Oda, I've never met anyone who says, "Ah, oh, yeah, I know him. I watch his stuff. I watch his old footage." I'm talking about Japanese judokas. None of them. I have to tell them about it, and it seems that the state of newaza in judo, in a sense, is it's not how it used to be, and you know, it it's 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 a very it's an observation that I did not want to make in a sense, but um, there's still Kosen Judo, of course. Uh, even Kosen Judo is very much different than BJJ, and I've noticed a lot of things, you know, how you, you know, warm up. Everything is much different, and I'll probably cover it soon if I can actually get some footage in. Um, even, like, I've seen techniques that I've... They did this little thing where you attack the turtle and... It's not something I've seen like on fanatics, on like some, you know, big judo black belt who competed in the Olympics. They show you how to enter the Sankaku. It's something completely different, an entry that I've never seen before into the Sankaku when someone turtles. And it's just, it's not, you know, crafting your way into a triangle. You just eviscerate the turtle position. And from there, 
you just put your hooks in and it's game over it's it's really something that there's something happening in those you know little cosin teams but um and i get why they don't want to film they barely you barely see anything on uh on the internet regarding Kosin Judo, you know, uh, competition wise, what's happening in classes. And that's unfortunate because I do feel that, that they have a lot to contribute and maybe they can actually re show the value of Neiwaza in Japan. But, um, you know, a lot of people, you know, when I talk to them about Neiwaza, they laugh it off. They say, Oh, I, I don't like Neiwaza. And, um, you barely get someone to accept to roll with you in in judo class and uh, because it's always you know free practice as adults it's always free practice unless you know you're a beginner you have a sensei that's really taking care of you you know for maybe i don't know 20 30 minutes showing you the basics how to enter and then from there you go and do some rounds with your friends but everything else is just um not the same as in france in france there's uh, Neuaza is still very much taken into high regards you know in the national institute a lot of the rounds start on the ground or for example throw and then from there you know you as they are on the ground you attack them and then the round starts on the ground there's just a lot of good things that we did in france it's very similar to the kosin judo class that i have been in the few that i've been in and uh, hopefully i can get something uh, for you to see because but in terms of you know classical kodokan judo it's becoming heavily 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 oriented towards the stand-up and um, it's not something that i wanted to see to be honest uh, i hope i'm wrong maybe there's something else going on uh elsewhere but um in terms of the big names this is what's happening mainly and of course anyone training in japan you know has a different uh view have seen something else please let me know down below this was Shadi and thank you for listening.